Hey, what's up? This is a quick reverb tutorial for beginners about setting up and using Reverb and Logic Pro X the right way. I'm going to show you the two best reverbs in Logic Pro X, some basic reverb settings to use for vocals and drums, and how to save your presets. Then we're going to get into when and why to combine reverbs, demonstrate how, and we're going to even touch a little on ducking the reverb with sidechain compression. And finally, I'm going to share with you the number one common reverb mistake that drives me crazy that beginners make that will make your mix sound amateur every single time. Coming up. Hi, Artie here from the Skylab Music Group in New York City, bringing you the best pro tips and advice for music producers, artists, and engineers to help you propel your music and your career up to the next level. On this channel, we do a lot of tips and strategy videos as well as tech reviews. So if you're new here, please subscribe and ring the bell so you won't miss out on any new content. Okay, let's get started. Reverb is all about creating depth in your mix, about having different layers, like different fields of view. What's in front of your face, what's behind that, and what's way off in the distance. So this is the concept of what reverb is all about, creating different sonic landscapes. So before you go off into auto mode and start adding reverb to anything, you need to first clearly identify why. Do you want the specific sound to be in front or behind these other sounds? Do you want the instrument to sound like it's in a room? Well, okay, what room, or hall, or club? How big is the room, and where in the room is the instrument? These decisions are largely based on musical style and genre, and what's appropriate for the specific song. So I'm gonna show you a few different examples using vocals and drums of how to create these different layers, modify them, and then save them. Okay, so let's dive into the computer. To keep things simple, I use dry stems for drums and vocals from a piece of a song and just the stereo stem for the rest of the instruments. So here's what we're going to be working with. In VIP, so stop it, that's what you be. Come party like this, this your born. Last dance till till the morn. You see me, I see you. Okay, so we're going to start with pulling up a uh, stock reverb from Chroma. So we're going to use a bus which will automatically create an auxiliary return with all the proper routing. And we're going to place the chrome reverb across the insert. Notice how I did not put the reverb across the insert on the channel I want reverb on, in this case the claps, but I put it on the auxiliary return instead. There are three good reasons for this. Number one, by putting the reverb on an aux return, we could send different amounts of different tracks all to the same reverb, so they're perceived to be all in the same room. Number two, reverbs can use a lot of DSP, so you don't want to open multiple instances of the same reverb on various tracks. And number three, when having the reverb on a bus, any adjustments you make to the settings will affect all the tracks that have sends on that bus. So if you have six drum sounds going to that reverb and you decide you want the room a little bigger, you only need to make one adjustment and it will affect all the tracks. So the default for this reverb is a room sound. So we're going to solo the clap and we're going to bring up the send. Okay, so we're going to scroll through some presets. So you click on the factory default and you scroll down to the various presets. We're going to start with amp room and we'll run through some presets till we hear something that we like that we feel we could start with. So we're looking for a smaller type room. We don't want anything too big and washy because this is a fast oriented dance track. Okay, something like that sounds nice. We're going to bring down the low end a little bit. That's our EQ curve over there. We'll bring up the high end. And there you'll hear the reverb pop through on the high end. Now a lot of these parameters are interrelated, but generally speaking, decay time is the tail of how long the reverb is going to sustain for. Distance sets the perceived distance from the source. So how close or far it seems from the actual source. Size is the size of the room. Is it a hall? Is it a small music club? We're not gonna go into crazy details right now, but all of these different parameters all relate to each other. Pre-delay sets the time between the start of the original signal and the arrival of the early reflections. That's how you can get a nice rhythm happening with the reverb, but be careful because it's not useful for everything. 
Earlier I set up a reverb I liked for this song, so I'm going to pull it down from the menu now. I saved it as a preset, which I'll show you how to do a little later. You can hear it has a nice short decay, so it won't get in the way of the other instruments. Okay, now we're going to solo the loop sound, and we're going to add some of that reverb to that loop. So we select bus 1, bring up the volume a bit. We can hear it now. Okay. Now let's hear it in combination with the clap. Okay, now let's solo the hi-hat, add a little bit of the hi-hat too. We want them all to sound like they're in the same room. Make sure to keep your ears focused on the reverb of the drums so you'll hear the difference when I take it off solo and we listen in context of the whole track. Okay, so now we're going to set up a separate reverb on the lead vocal. So we'll unmute that, change the cycle length to the beginning of this piece of the track. And because this is a rap vocal in a dance song, we want a nice tight reverb. We don't want anything big and washy. So we'll select bus two, which will automatically bring up an auxiliary to return. And we will select space designer in stereo. And when I click on the factory default button, all the menus pop up and I could look at the different spaces, large spaces, medium spaces, small spaces, and then rooms, plate reverbs. And if you look at the numbers to the left over there, it'll show you the decay time, which will give you some indication before you choose the reverb of how big it's going to appear. So we'll select vocal ambience. In VIP, so stop it, that's what you And we'll mean. bring up Come the send. Like this, this I'm going to exaggerate it a little bit. Let's it solo it. So stop it, that's what you be. Come party like this, this you're born. Last dance till, till the morn. Okay, now earlier I set up a reverb that I liked, and I saved it as a preset. So because this is a smaller reverb in a smaller room, it's going to make him sound like he's close and in our face. In VIP, so stop it, that's what you be. Come party like this, this you're born. Last dance till, till the morn. As you can hear, that's a much so smaller stomach, room like because this, we're going to combine that with another reverb. So now we're going to pull up bus three, which will again automatically create a return for bus three. And we're going to select space designer again. If you notice, the recent effects we selected show right up at the top. One very important point about combining reverbs, it's like advanced fashion and combining prints. You can really oh, screw things up geez. if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, I know, right? But if you understand it and you know why you're doing it, you can achieve some extraordinary results. So what we're going for is for the vocal to sound like it's in a medium-sized room, but we're standing in front of the singer. We're not standing on the other side of the room, which is what the shorter reverb on bus two is achieving by making the singer sound up front. And now we're going to combine that with a medium-sized room by adding it to another bus. So I'm going to select from the menu... Uh, Sky Medium Vocal, which is a medium room sound that I customized. And what we'll do is bring the volume up on that on bus three. Let's turn off bus two, so we're only listening to the return of this reverb. In VIP, so stop it, that's what you be. Come party like this, this you're born. Last dance till, till the morn. Now let's combine it with the other reverb. Put that back on. Come party like this, this you're born. Last dance till, till the morn. In VIP, so stop it, that's what you be. Come party like this, this you're born. Last dance till, till the morn. In okay, let's double click on the auxiliary return and name that. We also want to rename auxiliary to return. So we just click on the send and it will automatically bring up the return in the inspector. Now let's A, B with both reverbs in and out. In VIP, so stop it, that's what you be. Come party like this, this you're born. Last dance till, till the morn. In VIP, so stop it, that's what you be. Come party like this, this you're born. Last dance till, till the morn. In VIP, so stop it, that's what you be. Come party like this, this you're born. Last dance till, till the morn. 
So I brought up the reverb a little more than I would if this was the final mix, but you could really hear the ambience and the space that it's creating without being overbearing and sounding like it's in this huge room. It's what's appropriate for the track. Now let's get a much larger reverb for the singing vocals in the chorus. Come check me for the last day. Come check me for Okay, let's the last solo that. Select send four. Bus four. Come check me for the last dance. Come check and then we're going to select the chroma verb again. So one of my favorite reverbs is the Universal Audio Lexicon 4 ADL, but it eats up a lot of DSP. So I matched the chroma reverb to emulate one of my favorite vocal settings on the 4 ADL and saved it as a preset. Come check me for the last dance. 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 So as you can see, I fine-tuned a bit, and now I want to save that as a new preset. So I select the pull-down menu and scroll down till I see Save As, which brings up the save box. So I rename it and click Save, and then it's available there on the pull-down menu for any of my projects. Now we're going to touch on how side chain compression could be used on the reverb to duck the actual reverb while the vocal is playing, but it will still allow the tail of the reverb to come back up to full volume once the vocal stops. So you get this nice long reverb tail that doesn't interfere with the main vocal. Okay, so here's how we set this up. We go to the reverb channel and we select compressor, stereo. And then what we do is we go over to the side chain and we scroll down Till we see the background vocal track and we put that on now the threshold will be controlled by the audio from the background vocal track come check me for the last dance 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 Come check me for the last dance. 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 Come check me for the last Okay, so here's what we covered today. Setting up reverb on an auxiliary channel. The chroma space designer settings. Good presets for drums and vocals how to save your own presets, combining different reverbs, and basic sidechain compression. And now I'm gonna tell you the number one most common reverb mistake that beginners make that will make your mix sound amateur absolutely every time. And that mistake is using the default reverb setting that comes up, which is usually a hall, and putting way too much of it on the vocal. I've been hearing demos like this for 20 years and they still drive me crazy, and people still do it. Too much reverb just makes the singer sound like they're in a tunnel, and it just fogs everything up. So please use it sparingly, and learn to use smaller rooms instead of the default large hall, and take a moment to customize the settings for the song. <laughs> I've only touched on using reverb here, and it could take literally years to master. But because it's so important to getting a good mix, it's really worth the effort to learn how to use it correctly. So thanks for tuning in, and I hope you learned a few things about setting up and using reverb in Logic Pro X. If you have any reverb tips, I'd love to hear, as well as everyone else. So please share your thoughts and your comments down below. And if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Thanks. Please check out show notes and links down below in the description, which will contain links to other videos about reverb, as well as some other useful info. So thanks for checking out this video, and for more videos like this about mixing, engineering, music production, music career advice, and more, please subscribe below. Till next time, Skylab Music Group is bringing you the best pro tips and advice for growing your music career. So play it louder, and we'll talk soon.